So one of the things that I really like about this house is that when you first come in from the front entry, you've got the piano space, which is right at the front facing towards the street, and then the living dining kitchen is in the back. But we wanted to divide them without making them into two separate rooms, so we came up with the idea of having a, a partition wall that was half drywall and then half the sort of slats, and they kind of go up into the ceiling. Just kind of a cool detail, which you see right away at the beginning. And then going around here, this was the other part that I thought was really cool, is that the um, this uh, this frosted glass door uh, actually just opens <laughs> to reveal your sewing studio, mm. which uh, is a, one of the major spaces in the house, and it's where you spend a lot of your time doing yeah. stuff. It's a major work studio, so it's always in progress. So there's stuff all over the place, but yeah. it's uh, organized. And I think that is, I think it's really cool how it worked out because it's, it's big, so you've got an, a lot of different workspaces and you've got your table that's at a higher level, so it's more counter height, and then you've got your desk area for your computer and your sewing machines. And then I, I particularly like the, the storage stuff because I think what's really cool about that is that it, you can see all the thread and see all the fabric stacked in, mm -hmm. the, in the doors, so you get that sense. I mean, it really feels like it is a, a sewing studio, like, you know, some, some place that you make cool stuff that looks like that. So then going into the main part of the house, you've got your living area here and then your dining area there. But the thing I've always really liked about um, when you come in here is right away, because of the way that the windows are set up, you get a really strong connection to the outdoors and to the deck and to the backyard. And then the, the living room is kind of like a lounge, actually. <laughs> That's the way I think of it. It's sort of loungy. And I like the low-hanging light over the table. And then the thing, too, that's interesting is that the dining room actually is, takes up a pretty prominent spot in the house, and that was that was because you guys wanted to have the dining room be because you eat at the dining table yeah, like every day. Yeah, that's our casual eating space. Yes, yeah. so that's you don't have a, you don't have a formal dining room in that yeah. sense because you use the day to day dining room every single day, which is great. So then the kitchen, the thing that was important about the kitchen was we wanted to have one big island where everybody could sit around. But then I remember when we were doing the design, we also wanted to have this sort of um, area for the kids to get snacks, yep. which, which is just is pulled out a little bit away from the rest of the kitchen. So it's like the bistro area. So there's drinks in there and there's there's toast. To, toast for, for the kids and they can get that themselves. Yeah. And then the cooking area, the thing I always like about this is that the stainless steel wraps around this, the window, which is like a slot window, to bring light in onto the counter. And then it's all kind of banded in stainless steel. So there's not really a backsplash, it's just a window glass and then the, the stainless steel that wraps around. And then we did the, the cabinetry we did is uh, dark cherry, like a stained cherry, as well as white maple. And then we did it in two tones so that we had the sort of back area of the kitchen in the dark and then we did the island in the, in the white maple so there's a contrast. And we did that kind of throughout the house. We did sort of two colors of millwork throughout the house. But this is nice because it integrates all the fridge, fridges and the freezers like all flush into the wall so that they don't stick out and they look, um, they look very seamless into the, into the design of the millwork. This, on the second floor, this is a really cool idea with the plan because there's a sliding door that basically divides the three girls' rooms and their bathroom from yeah. your section, uh, which is your master bedroom and bathroom yeah, and your so office. Yeah, so we don't have to worry about waking them up at night, so when it's their time to go to sleep, they've got their privacy and they've got their space. And then we can, you know, cook, we can clean, we can <laughs> watch TV and they don't get disturbed. Yeah. And it's really uh, great to have that skylight in the center of the house because you get light right into the middle of the plan, which is not something that is typical on the second floor. So in the master bedroom, um, and actually on all the bedrooms on the second floor, uh, we did a kind of a different detail in that we um, popped the windows up higher than the plane of the ceiling on the second floor. But it was really cool because when you come into the room, the windows look like they're going up past the line of the ceiling. And we did that because we wanted to get um, as much light as we could get into the second floor. And then you walk through the closet to get into the bathroom. The thing I like about this bathroom is that um, we were able to get natural light in through the solar tubes, um, so it brings light into the center. What we really like is the amount of storage that we have. As you can see, there's a lot of stuff in here, so it always looks clean. Yeah, it looks great. And there's always a place to put stuff. And I like the way that the tub is set into the corner, into the um, to the outer edge of the bathroom and then the blue sort of the ice blue tile wraps around it feels very soothing 
So what's the thing that you like uh, most about living in an open concept? Well, I spend a lot of time in the kitchen, so I'm always cooking. And I like the fact that I can always tell where the kids are. I can see them if they're outside in the backyard. I can see them in the living room. And they're always close by. And I don't feel like I'm stuck in the kitchen. I think this house is a good example of an open plan organization. This is the main floor of the plan. What I want to do is show you how the, it is organized. We can think of it as being con made up out of open and closed spaces. The closed spaces are the mudroom, the powder room, the closet, as well as this enclosed room at the front, which is the study. We then have an entry space where we come in here, and then the rest of this is all one big open space. So one of the very first sketches that we did when we started to work on the concept design of this house was to think about the in front yard of the house and the backyard of the house being connected through the interior. So rather than the house being this closed box that you walk around to go from front to back, this is a house that really opens up to both the front and the back garden when and the front deck and the back deck are really part of the house. And you can stand at one end and look right through to the other. So the, the two decks actually become one in some sense. There are two basic elements that we use to create the primary spatial divisions in this house. The first is the freestanding wall that separates the piano area at the front and the front terrace room from the living space and dining space at the back. And then with that open slat piece that we, that we created, we have that ability to see through that so that even it isn't a complete barrier. The second spatial organization is a slight drop ceiling that runs from the piano room through to the back of the, uh, of the living space. And it creates the distinction between the dining room here and the living room over it on this side. Then finally we have the piece that I'm actually standing in front of which is this low wood wing wall. It actually is the thing that defines the edge of the kitchen where the kitchen starts to be defined and the main living spaces. The second floor is organized into two halves, one for the children and one for the parents. The parent side consists of the master bedroom, the study, their closet, dressing area and uh, bathroom and it is connected through a hallway there. There's also a door that takes you through into the second half of the house, which is the children's area, and that's really quite distinct from the adult piece, and it includes three bedrooms, a bathroom, as well as this extra wide hallway, which we put a skylight in, and which acts as a kind of play space that connects all of the three bedrooms and the bathroom as a great place for the kids to hang out away from mom and dad. There's two different ways in which you can have a house. One is to have a house as a series of individual rooms in which each has a different function in it and then you move from one room into another room into another room. So you eat, you cook, you watch TV, you sleep, you play the piano. And what we tried to do, which is a modern idea, which was to try and open up those rooms into one large open plan space and then use different kinds of architectural devices to define areas in which those kinds of different uses can still occur. It's not just a big warehouse space, but it is open, and it allows you to be in one space and see what someone else is doing in another space all at once without it just being chaos in a big open warehouse space.